Welcome to the Pleasant Pages Podcast, uh, a podcast about stories. I'm Billy. I'm DJ. And I'm Disa. Together, we look at different kinds of books. Today, we'll be tackling the issues of what uh, of what book of each genre should be on every bookshelf. We have a couple of candidates already. Uh, let's start with the first book, representing science fiction and published in 2011. We have The Martian by Andy Warren. Uh, in The Martian, uh, Mark Wayne is an astronaut. His mission was to discover and live on Mars with his crew. The mission was cancelled and Mark was left behind. He has to sur- survive on Mars and goes through desperate situations. The story might look simple, but Mark's judgment and the incidents that happened to him were very interesting. Yeah, I agree. I, I also think that Mark's signature humor and quick thinking were the most important factors that allowed him to survive. Ah, uh, yeah, the humor. For me, I was filled with anticipation while reading, especially when he when he nearly dies five times. It also made me keep on wondering how Mark would escape Mars and survive. Uh, how about the Interstellar? Uh, I think it's a close run up. In Interstellar, Cooper, a former NASA pilot, uh, lives on the future Earth, which is heavily polluted. He and a small NASA crew live for three new possible planets for people to live, but the first two planets fail. Time on Earth is going faster than in, than in space, so Cooper's daughter has become an adult now. Cooper goes into a black hole and solves the gravity problem. Cooper's daughter uses it to go to Saturn and raise a new city there. Uh, yeah, like I, I, I do like Interstellar, but I think The Martian is better because it used existing scientific methods to survive. While in Interstellar, so much of the plot depended on undiscovered materials, such as five-dimensional beings uh, and time travel, all of which are non-existent or impossible at the moment. Oh, I see. The Martian is clearly the winner. All right, thank you. Uh, we can go over to the next book. Now representing historical fiction, we have The Goldsmith's Daughter by Tanya Landman. Published in 2008, The Goldsmith's Daughter is a historical fiction novel about the Spanish invaders conquering the Aztecs. It's a historical novel, but it's still fun. In this novel, Eta Kate lives in the ancient Aztec city Tenochtitlan. When foreigners were overseas come to their land, her people initially welcome them, but find that the Spanish are overly greedy. Fights begin between the Spanish and the Aztecs, and Eradicate escapes as the Aztec civilization falls. Um, uh, well, I actually have a question. Uh, I wonder why you chose this book. Aren't there many other books, such as Amir and Frank's Diary, uh, that are both historical and renowned? Why didn't you choose, why didn't you choose this, those books? Um, I also did think about having Anne Frank's Diary as the historical novel, but the special thing about this book is that the book is written from the perspective of the Concord Aztecs. Usually, history is, is written from the winner's perspective, but this author, Tanya Landman, she revisited this history in a completely different way. This work has, has influenced me to see events in history from a completely different perspective. Uh, wasn't any Frank's diary, diary written from the perspective of the oppressed Jews? I, it tells the story of a young Jew girl and a family struggling to hide from the Nazis. That's right, but technically, that's also from the winner's perspective, since the Germans lost World War II. But, the, but in the Spanish invasion, the Spanish were clearly the winners. Oh, I, I see, I understand. So can we all agree that the Goldsmith daughter is the representative for historical novels? Yeah. yeah. Uh, now I guess it's time for the fantasy of fantasy, Harry Potter by J.K. Rowling. Oh, I know that it's very famous and exciting, but I've never read it before. Can you explain the summary of one book you like in particular? Yes, of course. Now I will explain. Personally, <laughs> I like The Prisoner of Az- Azkaban the most, which is the third book and it was published in 1999. In Harry Potter's third year at Hogwarts, there's a prisoner on the loose called Sirius Black. Harry discovers that Sirius Black was framed for turning his parents over to Lord Voldemort. Harry saves Sirius from Dementors by time travel and a Patronus spell. The whole story is filled with interesting twists and turns. Um, and I and I like this book because it was the only book that sh- that started a normal defense against the, the against the dark arts teacher, and because Harry learned to make a Patronus. Oh uh, yeah, like I, I do like the third book, but like for me personally, I kind of like the fifth book more because, uh, yeah, most of the scenes were very interesting, uh, and all the scenes such as Harry giving DA lessons uh, were great. I especially love the part when when Fred and George put on the most beautiful and satisfying fireworks ever. Mm, no, the third was the best. It's the only book where Voldemort doesn't come out, and Harry also gets his firebolt in the third book. Book began serious are rescued. Come on, no, the fifth is the best. The DA was created, Voldemort fought Dumbledore, the Weasley twins put on the greatest show- Hermione punched Malfoy! In the face! Isn't that reason enough? Well, I like the punch. Uh, okay, let's- let's go with the third book. Alright. Okay. Uh, 
Guys, did I have to hear that? I'm going to forget everything you said and read the whole thing. That's a good idea. Please do so as soon as possible. Yeah, I'll do it. Calm down. I can't wait to go on the next book because it's one of my favorite books ever. I also read it and it's a masterpiece which I strongly recommend. Okay, and this book might be something that you teenagers might want to read. To All the Boys I Loved Before by Jenny Han. Published in 2014, To All the Boys I've Loved Before is a story about Laura Jean's life with her older sister Margot, her little sister Kelly, and her father. Laura Jean writes letters for boys that she liked for her own eyes only to pour out her emotions on a piece of paper to get over that boy. But her younger sister Kelly sent all the letters to the boys. She's such a strong. Laura Jean decided to pretend to be in love with Peter, a boy she had once liked until the whole situation was over. As they went on fake dates, uh, they started to know each other more and they be began to genuinely like each other. Even, even though it was a story about a teenage girl, the story was understandable from a boy's point of, view, point of view too. I really, really recommend this book. Uh, honestly, I haven't really read this book yet. Uh, is it a series or a standalone book? It's the first book in a trilogy called the Two All the Boys trilogy. The second and third books are also amazing and I think everyone should read them. I love this story, but I think it might have been better if Leverage had thought to explain the letter to Josh instead of hurriedly pretending to like Peter. I think Josh would have understood. Explaining the letter would have been a good solution at, at the time, but if Laura John hadn't pretended to, to like Peter, their relationship would never have been made, and the entire series would have gone in, in a different direction. Yeah, but the story could have been as good without Peter and Laura Jean together because John Ambrose also had an interest in Laura Jean. The only reason Laura Jean turned away John was because Peter was already there. But then Laura Jean would never have understood Jen's situation with her father. Although John Ambrose is my favorite character, I don't see how John and Laura Jean could have been a good plotline for all three books. There are always ways to write a story without necessarily sticking to one specific scenario. I firmly believe that Jen Jenny Han could have whipped up another amazing story with John and Laura Jean together. Okay, uh, so we'll agree to disagree. But now let's go on to the last book. We have The Giver by Lois Lowry, published in 1993 and representing Dystopian. Uh, so, The Giver. Uh, jo Jonas lives in a perfectly controlled society. Uh, there is no pain, fear, or hatred. Everyone has their job and all they do is to follow that. One day, The Giver gives Jonas, me Jonas the memory and Jonas starts to think by himself for the first time. Jonas then decides to leave the community and learns the world beyond his community. This story tells the importance of thinking and how restricting creativity can affect the entire society. Well, I, I do like Giver, but isn't Fahrenheit 451 a better choice? It tells, a, uh, it tells of a future where all books have to be burned because they cause conflict with, within the society. Guy Montag is a fireman whose job is to burn books. Uh, he comes across a book and starts reading them in secret. He and an old professor start a plan to overthrow the government, but eventually fails. Uh, Montag escapes the city, uh, it, and the city is uh, obliterated with bombs. I think Fahrenheit 451 can definitely compare against uh, The Giver. Um, yeah, that's also nice. But The Giver got a new award in 1994. Also, The Giver does not have an ending and is uncertain. It makes you think and imagine more. Um, but even though those books are very, both very good, I'm more onto The Giver's side. Fahrenheit 451 is great. However, for most people, there are more things to learn in The Giver. Something more than just schoolwork. Well, I guess it's two to one. The giver takes a spot for dystopia. All right, today we talked about which five books of different genres should be on your bookshelf. What have we got? Uh, we have The Martian, The Goldsmith's Daughter, The Prisoner of Azkaban, To All the Boys I've Loved Before, and The Giver. It's been a wonderful time, and I pray you listeners will read these books. I guarantee they are all masterpieces. Thank you for listening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. What can I try to do to make you laugh again? What can I do to make you feel this again? Is it enough if I tell you why you love you then?